Hello everyone and welcome to the very strong uh, Moscow International Tournament of 1936. Uh, we have a game from round 4. It's Jose Roll Capablanca uh, versus uh, Vyacheslav Ragozin. Now, uh, some of you may remember Capablanca started with two draws and then he won game number 3 against Ryumin. Ryumin had that uh, terrible queen blunder. Uh, now Capablanca faces uh, a very strong uh, player, a very strong Soviet Grandmaster. He was uh, well known for his uh, fierce attacks and uh, early pawn sacrifices to, to get things started. Now uh, some of you may know this, some of you may not know this. He was uh, also uh, a, a world champion in, in correspondence chess and uh, often a second to Mikhail Botvinnik. As uh, Botvinnik's style is a bit different, uh, then he often used uh, uh, Ragozin to train with him. They played secret matches uh, to prepare for his World Chess Championship matches, uh, so Botvinnik would uh, get a hang of uh, how to defend against uh, such styles. So, uh, but uh, will that style work against uh, someone of uh, Capablanca style? We have to uh, see the game. So, Capablanca opens with d4. Uh, but before we see the game, we do have a photo challenge, so best of luck to everyone. Uh, here it is. Who are the people in this photo? Uh, if you are unable to recognize anyone, that's because uh, these are the members uh, of the Prague Chess Club. Now, I was contacted uh, by Will Millership uh, via email. He said that uh, their chess club in, in Prague is uh, some uh, 187 members uh, <laughs> Uh, large and uh, but uh, mostly they get uh, like uh, six people to show up and uh, they uh, they get together like uh, uh, once every two weeks uh, maybe if they had more people they would get together more often so basically uh, he said if I could uh, help him promote it a little bit uh, if anyone is in Prague uh, check out the Prague chess club they play in the chess cafe in the main square uh, every two weeks uh, they are open to all levels so as you can see uh, some uh, very nice people there, you know, having a couple of beers, uh, playing chess. Uh, the boards are very nice, it seems very comfortable. A lot of books uh, there on the shelf. Uh, there's the, the, I believe that's the DGT 2010 chess clock, so uh, they are well equipped. So, you know, if you're in Prague, maybe you don't know, they, they have their get-togethers, uh, you know, do, uh, do you know, visit them, maybe, maybe you'll uh, have the time of your life. I will put a link to their, uh, to their uh to their group uh, on uh, get on uh, what's the website gettogether.com or something like that meetup.com uh, in the description below so you know do check it out uh, if you're in Prague you know maybe it wouldn't hurt to, to, uh, <laughs> to uh, check them out so getting back to the game d4 we have knight to f6 by Ragozin c4 e6 knight to c3 and bishop to b4 uh, the Nimzo Indian defense Queen to b3, the Spielmann variation, we have knight to c6, uh, defending the bishop, e3, uh, d5, knight to f3, castles, and uh, a3 now, attacking the bishop. Uh, before reacting to this, uh, d captures on c4, attacking the queen, uh, bishop captures on c4, and now uh, bishop back to d6. And here, Ragozin, of course, would uh, very much enjoy playing knight to a5, uh, getting uh, rid of at least one, uh, one bishop uh, from Capablanca. So there are a couple of ways you can avoid this. You can either move the bishop back, you can move the queen, for example, to c2. Uh, Capablanca chooses a different idea. He plays bishop to, c, uh, bishop to b5, threatening to capture the knight on c6 and ruin black spawn structure and eventually uh, win that c6 pawn. Uh, and here, since... Uh, uh, Capablanca uh, did play twice uh, with the same piece in the opening, so he, he's kind of uh, breaking the, the opening principles. Uh, so Ragozin uh, goes uh, uh, precisely by uh, by the right principle. He plays e5. As Capablanca's king is still in the center, uh, you know you have to open up the position. So e5. Uh, we have bishop captures on c6, pawn cap uh, first pawn captures on d4. Uh, knight captures on d4 and pawn captures on c6. And here Capablanca captures the pawn. Knight captures on c6, uh, attacking the queen on d8. We have queen to d7, attacking Capablanca's knight uh, on c6. Uh, knight goes back to d4 and now queen to g4, uh, immediately rushing into the attack, already threatening to capture on g2. And here uh, you don't really have a lot of options. You could go king f1, but then your rook will be out of the game. So Capablanca plays the strongest move. He castles. Even though it seems a bit risky, uh, the bishop is eyeing, the, or both the bishops are eyeing the king side. There, this bishop already eyeing h2. Uh, queen is already on g4. Uh, the knight is here. The rooks are, the rooks can easily come into the attack. Uh, but, you know, Capablanca is not afraid. 
Uh, and here, uh, if you tried something like queen h5 immediately to go for this, then f4 would be uh, a very strong defensive idea for white. Uh, uh, another thing is uh, you might want to go c5, uh, kind of force white to go back to f3, uh, then this will this will kind of stop the f pawn. So c5 uh, would be the best idea here. But Ragozin has a different idea. He plays bishop to a6, attacks Capablanca's rook, uh, but this gives Capablanca just enough time to consolidate, and uh, if you don't do something quickly, then you're just going to be a pawn down against Capablanca. Uh, Capablanca plays h3, first and in between move before reacting to the threat against the rook. Uh, we have queen to h4 and now knight back to f3. Again, with an attack uh, against the queen and, you know, uh, consolidating, uh, bringing more pieces to defend the white king. Uh, queen to h5 and only now rook to e1. Uh, we have rook a to b8, attacking Capablanca's queen, queen to a4, uh, and now bishop to b7. So, uh, Capablanca is still up a pawn, but uh, the position is uh, is very intense here. Uh, both of these bishops are eyeing the eyeing Capablanca's king, and he has to be very careful. Uh, first, of course, he, he doesn't want to allow que bishop captures on f3, uh, so he pushes e4 and not allowing it. We have h6, uh, creating some breeding space for the king, uh, maybe in the future, but also preparing the maneuver knight h7 to g5. Uh, we have bishop to e3. Capturing an a7 is also possible, uh, but Capablanca is already up a pawn. He knows that if he defends, his extra pawn will be uh, will prove to be decisive. And capturing here doesn't really uh, give Black any any great refutation. Uh, but, uh, you know, th there's no need to grab more material than you need. So, bishop to e3, developing a piece. You should never neglect the development. Uh, rook f to e8, and now bishop to d4, still uh, ignoring the pawn on a7. Uh, we have knight to h7, uh, Ragozin prepares to bring the knight over to the attack, uh, and now bishop captures on a7. Now Capablanca figures it's safe to, to grab the a7 pawn. Uh, we have rook to a8, and now it seems that for the price of this pawn, uh, Capablanca's bishop is now trapped. How do you how do you get out of this? Uh, well, Capablanca finds a way, and it, it's perhaps this move that Ragozin missed. Queen to b5, uh, attacking the bishop, but uh, there's no time to react to this, because also Capablanca is attacking Ragozin's queen on h5. Uh, the only move you have that is that is you know playable here for black is queen captures uh, on b5. So we have queen captures, uh, knight captures on b5. Now the knight is also protecting the bishop, and it's very nice uh, because you can't kick away the knight. The bishop would be hanging on d6. So after knight b5, we have rook captures on e4, grabbing the pawn. Uh, rook captures, bishop captures, and now knight to d2, attacking the bishop on e4. Uh, bishop to d3, attacking the knight on, on b5, and now basically forcing Capablanca to capture on d6. We have knight captures, uh, we have rook captures, and now knight back to e4. Uh, the knights are still kind of protecting each other, uh, but uh, there is no way to take uh, advantage of this. Uh, knight to f8, you do have to bring uh, your piece into the game. Knight to c5, attacking the bishop on d3. Uh, bishop to f5, and now comes knight to f3. So now uh, Capablanca is still up a pawn. Uh, it's not that only that he's up a pawn. The material on the king side is completely even, uh, but on the queen side he does have two pawns against one, and also the a pawn is a passed pawn. So a very, uh, a very important difference. Uh, we have knight to e6, offering a trade of knights, but first rook to c1. Uh, we have king to f8, improving the position of the king, and now knight captures. Bishop captures, and now knight to d4, uh, threatening to capture the bishop. Uh, rook to b7, threatening the b2 pawn, first b4, uh, and now bishop to d7, uh, now controlling this knight on d4. Uh, we have f4, now Capablanca is preparing to bring his king also into the game. Uh, king to e7, king to f2, uh, rook to a7 now, attacking the a3 pawn, and now rook to c3. So notice how Capablanca is, uh, you know, keeping it, keeping it cool and uh, just controlling the position. Uh, king to d6, bringing his king uh, <laughs> deeper into the position, uh, but now Capablanca plays uh, a spectacular uh, move, uh, a favorite move of the engine, uh, plays rook to d3. And now notice how the knight, uh, the pawns here are controlling c5 and e5. The knight is controlling c6 and e6. Uh, the king can't move, the king can't go left or, or right. The knight is threatening knight b5, a discovered check winning the rook on a7. So this forces the king to go back. King to e7, and now, uh, of course, this gives uh, more time and opportunity for Capablanca to improve the position of his own king. Uh, king to e3. Uh, we have rook to a4 now. 
uh, rook to c3, attacking the c7 pawn, and now rook, uh, king to d6, defending the pawn. Uh, here, Capablanca repeats the position, rook to d3, we have king to e7, and now rook back to c3. Uh, Ragozin doesn't mind repeating moves, we have king to d6, and now uh, Capablanca doesn't want a draw by threefold repetition, uh, so he goes knight to e2, making room for his king to enter the position. Uh, we have g6, and now rook to d3, again with a check. Here, Capablanca is <coughs> uh, trying to, trying not trying to, but, you know, uh, allowing uh, Ragozin to trick himself with king to c6. Here, b5 would, of course, uh, win the bishop on d7, as the king has uh, no squares to still be protecting the bishop after b5 check. Uh, but after rook to d3, he goes back, king e6, and now we have king to d4. Capablanca calmly improves the position of his king. Uh, instead, he could go for the forcing variation f5 check. Now, you still have to protect the bishop here, so you can't capture with the king. Uh, and after g captures, you've ruined your pawn structure, then comes a uh, knight to f4 check. King to e7 and knight to d5 check. Now, you don't want to you don't want to go anywhere like king e6, uh, then you allow this with check. Uh, and after something like king to f8, you still capture the pawn, and now you are still up a pawn, but now, uh, instead of just being up a pawn, you have two passed pawns, and the black has a double c pawn, uh, a completely winning position for white. So Capablanca doesn't go for this, uh, rather he calmly improves the position. King d4. Uh, we have rook to a6, and now comes rook to e3 check. King d6, and now knight to c3. Uh, we have f5, and now comes b5, attacking the rook and uh, simply grabbing more space. Uh, rook moves, and now king to c4. Bishop to e6 check, king simply moves to b4. Uh, c5, uh, now forcing Capablanca to capture the pawn uh, via Ampassan, as the king has nowhere to go, so b captures on c6. But it doesn't uh, help black all that much. Uh, as he can't capture it, the bishop is still under attack, so we have bishop to g8, now preparing to capture the pawn, uh, and Capablanca plays knight to b5 check, uh, forcing uh, Ragozin to capture the pawn. King captures on c6, and now comes rook to d4. Uh, not allowing the king to go anywhere. Uh, we have g5, now comes rook to d6 check, uh, king moves, now comes pawn captures on g5, h captures on g5, and rook to g6 now. Uh, as you can see, there is no way to defend the, g the g5 pawn. Uh, rook to f8, and now simple rook captures on g5. Uh, we have f4, now comes knight to d4, uh, rook to c8, now comes rook to g7 with check, uh, king b6, and now uh, rook to b g6 with check, king b7, and now knight to b5, uh, threatening knight to d6, uh, winning the rook, so rook to f8, uh, knight to d6 with check, we have uh, king to b8, and now comes h4, uh, and it was in this position on move 63 that uh, Vyacheslav Ragozin resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Well, he's down two pawns, there's really nothing to hope for here with the black pieces. Uh, Capablanca will simply put his rook on g7, uh, completely cut off the black king, and then the past h pawn and the past a pawn will be decisive. Uh, there's nothing really really you can do about this, the king can come help. Uh, the black, black has no, no playable moves here. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game, I do hope you enjoyed it, and uh, it was uh, very interesting how uh, after this king to e6 move, Capablanca, of course uh, Capablanca knew that f5 was winning, uh, but Capablanca was sometimes like that, he didn't like to force things, he knew that king d4 was winning, uh, and he liked uh, uh, positions like this, uh, he often said that if you have to complicate things in chess, uh, then you do not understand chess. So, uh, a, a very nice idea, uh, I mean, probably a lot of you who, who enjoy it, uh, you know, combinations and everything would immediately play this move, uh, but not Jose Ro Capablanca. He went for king d4, and then the position simply, you know, uh, simply told the truth. The, the position deteriorated uh, for black, and there, there was nothing, you know, every move he played, it was simply uh, ruining the position for him. So yeah, uh, after h4, uh, the game was over, and a very nice win, so starting with two draws and now two wins in the very strong uh, 1936 international tournament in Moscow. Uh, we'll check out uh, some of the more games from this, uh, this mini-series, uh, I do hope you're enjoying. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's it, uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with another interesting video, and uh, I do hope you enjoyed my stream. Uh, as I'm actually recording this video before uh, the stream, uh, but I hope everything went well with the stream and that you all uh, showed up and enjoyed it. 
So yeah, and the link to the Leeches tournament for tomorrow will be in the description below also. So, you know, feel free to already register for it if you, if you will be able to join us tomorrow. Uh, thank you all and uh, I'll see you soon.